And now, this is Kutztown Live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. This is Kutztown Live. My name is Laura Keim. I will be your host today with my fabulous co-host... Juliana Jablonski. Hello, hello, hello. We are back here from spring break. It's good to be in the uh, studios this afternoon. It really is good to be back, definitely. Okay, well, today we have a very exciting guest. Well, we have Miss Lori D'Onofrio Galli from the Northeast Brooks Chamber of Commerce, and she has brought a lovely friend with her. Hi, Lori. Hi, Laura. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great considering we're one day away from spring and a full moon. Yes, that's exciting stuff. Free Rita's tomorrow, first day of spring. Oh, that's great. Good news. (laughs) Good reminder. Thank you. Well, I'm really happy to be here today, and I do have a special guest. In a few minutes, I'll introduce her. But first, as you know, I'll run through a schedule of some of our upcoming activities at the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce. Remember to stay current on all of our events, programs, and networking activities. You can check us out at northeastberkschamber.com. Coming up this evening at 4.30 in Birdsboro, which is a little bit on the cusp of our Northeast Berks Chamber, we are very happy to conduct a ribbon cutting event for the Birdsboro Lodge. Uh, which is a new member that joined in December. So we know that we'll have a number of people there to celebrate with the Birdsboro Lodge. Tomorrow evening we'll be here for a networking mixer in Kutztown at the Kutztown Tavern. Uh, And this will be jointly hosted by the Kutztown Rotary Club and the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce. Both of these events are free. There will be refreshments provided, and with the networking event, there'll be a cash bar. So if you're a member of the chamber or you're a member and you'd like to bring a guest, you're certainly welcome to do so. Coming up next Wednesday, as part of Kutztown University's Entrepreneurial Leadership Week, uh, the Northeast Berks Chamber has been involved in organizing and partnering with the College of Business for the Women's Panel and Networking Luncheon for a third consecutive year. All events next week are free and open to the public, and our event is on March 27th, which is Wednesday from 11 to 1 in the McFarland Student Union. Please go to kutztown.edu and uh, use this text search box for Entrepreneurial Leadership Week, and you can register for the luncheon, the family business panel, or any of the other events that are happening Tuesday through Thursday. Now I am happy to introduce a special guest. Her name is Marcy Talker. Marcy is a therapist. She's the founder of Gray Muzzle Manor in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania, and she's also a member of our Northeast Berks Chamber. Welcome, Marcy. Hi. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Well, we're going to get to some exciting information about upcoming events and fundraisers for Gray Muzzle Manor, but first, why don't you tell us a little bit about the mission of Gray Muzzle Manor, why you decided to find, found the organization, the nonprofit, um, and what you've been doing lately. Oh my goodness. Um, Gray Muzzle Manor, actually, just recently I have lived there and has been around for seven years. I know. Um, and originally I purchased the small part, small farm for a sanctuary for myself and my animals. Um, I had already been very interested in animal assisted psychotherapy, preferably equine psychotherapy um, and had really pursued that uh, throughout undergraduate and graduate school, which I was in the middle of when I bought my place. Um, And I just knew that one day I wanted to have um, a place where people could come and I could offer that type of therapy. I wasn't expecting that to happen yet, um, but I, I wanted to be home with my horse and so I did what most people would do, right? Totally crazy. At 24-ish, um, bought a farm. Um, and I was already doing senior dog rescue and hospice care and special needs animal rescue. I've actually done that for, oh, 16 years, um, with, hence the name Gray Muzzle Manor. Um, and so I continued to do that. And people started to, friends started to um, contact me. They had a stressful day at work or um, 
whatever, and could they come out and spend time with the animals? Great, sure, yeah, come out. So I started to see people experiencing the same things that I had experienced and thought, oh, my gosh, um, this, is, this is really happening. And it kind of started to evolve from there. Um, they would tell their friends who would tell their friends, and we called them visits, and we just would do these r really kind of fun visits, um, feed the animals, talk, whatever. Um, and that, it, it just snowballed. You know, it's unusual for me to see you sitting here in the studio without an animal. I rarely see you without a dog, and I've been to the farm, and I've seen the chickens and pigs. I mean, you have a whole array of animals there. And you talked a little bit about equine therapy, and, of course, there's other animal-assisted therapy that happens. Is that, um, is it most often children who take advantage of that, or, or do you have adults also working with animals? Uh, well, I do have two dogs with me because we have to see clients later. Okay, so I just haven't seen them yet. Yeah, yes. no surprise there. Um, so the, the therapy part of my business, which has really been evolving, um, is I'm a client-centered therapist. Um, and client-centered therapy is strength-based therapy, or, or person-centered, you might hear it, is very, um, non-directive it's strength based it's kind of looking at you know we all are on this journey of life and we're going to come across th things that we might struggle with um and the point of life is really trying to be the full functioning person f that each of us are capable of whatever that looks like and saying that change can happen and that can occur if certain things are present in the environment um so for example acceptance empathy with a therapist, non-judgment, um, congruence, you know, like with me and how I'm treating somebody. And those also happen to be things that animals offer us um, organically. Um, so while I do animal-assisted therapy, we also will hike sometimes. We do art therapy. We put some play therapy in there. Um, We've done therapy with the kids climbing apple trees and made it work um, with the model that I'm trained in. Um, I see a lot of kids and teenagers, um, which is not a population I saw myself working with, actually. I went through school um, saying I was going to work with women, um, middle adolescence to middle adulthood, struggling with anxiety, depression, trauma history, that type of thing. And I do work with them, um, but a casework job a couple of years ago showed me how much I actually do like working with little guys. And so it is a, it was a lot of kids and adolescents. Apparently not a lot of people like to work with adolescents. Go figure. Mm -hmm. um, teasing. I love them. Um, but I have, I have adults too. So how do your animals come to you typically? Um, they come through the rescue. Uh, so, and I'll say to the rescues or, you know, in the public too, like 95% of the time we say no. Um, it's very small and I do intend to keep it that way. I have a certain standard of quality of care in my head that I know we, the size, you know, that I can provide if it's a, a certain size and plus being able to give my attention as well. Um, we have a few foster homes that we work with. Uh, so the animals come in, sometimes it's the public contacting me and sometimes it's local shelters. Mm -hmm. And um, sorry, that is how they come in. Um, they come in actually for a few different reasons. I, we do a lot of community outreach. I'm very passionate about how can we keep pets and families together because working in animal welfare also for probably 12 years, my opinion is most people don't want to get rid of their pets, but they've decided in their life that's the best decision for them and their family where nobody to judge that we might not do the same thing but it's not a, it's not our story um so if there's a way that we can keep them together um then i i try to do that and it's not um something that is offered really anywhere else which i've discovered mm -hmm. why um so for example we have a program called safer 
program, Support for Animals and Families Enabling Recovery. Um, and the point of that program is a, a lot of folks will not or put off going into treatment for drug and alcohol issues, mental health issues, escaping domestic violence, things like that. A lot of people don't seek treatment because they don't have anywhere for their pet to go. Mm -hmm. So here's their one friend that they've had through everything. That friend doesn't care. They were making six figures and now their electric is shut off. They don't care about any of that. And we're going to we're going to ask them to get rid of that. Um, so we also have worked with folks that ha are going to be temporarily homeless and um, like I said it's, and it's very case by case um, mm -hmm. so and actually I haven't announced yet I can announce it now we have two Springer Spaniels we've had in care for almost two years oh. um, their owner and I do have permission to share the story um, and you'll have to watch the page which I'll give the information on that later for more um, she is well this month might be 15 months clean from heroin um, and she's had the dog, had the dogs for six, seven years and we got them and she went into treatment and she's worked her butt off. And now she'll get the pets back. So she, her, the dogs are going home, um, That's hopefully wonderful. next week. They visited, they're with, they're in a foster home, um, mm -hmm. and they visit, you know, we would do visits and then they would, they had started doing overnights and stuff like that. And. Um, she finally found housing, and I can't, I can't believe it. I'm so happy for her. Um, but why should we take those away from her? Right. It's um, wonderful that you can facilitate that. That's amazing. Little by little, one mm -hmm. by one. Um, we have a dog, a couple dogs in care. Um, their owner uh, was escaping domestic violence, and that is a, a big one. You see, the partner might threaten to kill the animal if they leave. Um, that kind of thing, and um, hopefully they are going to have their first visit actually too, coming up. Um, and then the shelters contact as well, and also the public. Older animals people can't keep anymore for whatever mm -hmm. reason. If it is the public, I try to see like, all right, is there anything that we can do so that they can keep them? Is it a surgery needs to be paid for? Is it a crate that might help? Is it a trainer we can go, you know, send in there? Right. Um, a lot of times I actually find myself, you know, talking to them about really w what needs to happen is, is euthanasia. And um, I'm able to sometimes help them realize that it's, it is time. It's not just, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so on the shelters and some of them stay, some of them end up not leaving the farm and some of them do go to foster care and some of them even get adopted. And you know, that brings us to an important point. Because Gray Muzzle Manor is a nonprofit, you require donations, financial support to provide uh, the many services that you just um, referenced. And I know that you have a few fundraisers that are on the calendar. Why don't you tell us about those? Um, okay, yes, we spend on average, well, f for an example, we had a dog of a very large surgery yesterday, it was probably close to $2,000. Um, and spend probably around $20,000 a year in veterinary care, probably in 2018. Um, but so yes, we do have some events coming up. Um, while I'll be at the March 27th Kutztown Women's Panel, and actually Emmett will be there too. So if you're on the fence about coming, and the food isn't enough to get you there, Emmett, my, the dog will be there. Um, he's the seventh member. Uh, I don't know. Did you know? That's a huge dog. Yeah, you did know. <laughs> um, and then April 6th, we have our first workshop. I'm hosting our first workshop. It's a women's empowerment workshop. Um, and it's going to be super fun. It is 11 to 3. And it is, a, it is $100 for the day. There's Where's a, that help? It's actually at the farm. Um, oh, wow. And it is, uh, space is limited. Um, we're going to have lunch. We're going to kind of dabble in some animal-assisted therapy techniques, some art therapy. We have someone coming to talk about Reiki and do some Reiki and how that works. Um, another person coming to talk about um, kind of sharing her story, what women's empowerment, and um, 
that's going to be really fun. I'm How very can excited. a person register for that program? You can register by emailing me at m talker t as in tom o c k e r at graymuzzlemanor dot org. Um, you can find that information on the Facebook page as well. Um, our social media is really active. <laughs> um, and what about Hops for Hooves? Hops for Hooves. So then May 4th is our second annual craft beer and bender fair. Um, last year we outgrew the venue before we even got there. So hopefully uh, it happens too. Is um, that this year? outside the area? It, this year it's going to be at the Liberty Fire uh, Liberty Fire Company in Sinking Spring. Oh. Um, the parking at my place, it's not ideal for too many people. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be 11 to 5. Uh, we have 13 confirmed breweries as of today. So we have Trogues is going to be there, Stable 12, Saucony. Um, oh my gosh, am I having it? There's a list of them. On and what's the, page. the cost to attend? Um, the cost to attend, so there's t a couple different types of tickets. There's the, a $25 wristband that includes um, unlimited samples and meal tickets. And then there's a what we call a designated driver one that is $5. And that's if, if you're not coming to drink, you just want to buy things too. I personally don't drink and don't like beer, but um, lots of people do. And it's it's fun. And then um, under 14 is free. Okay. Um, there's going to be music bands. There's going to be some a bunch of the animals. There's going to be a kissing booth. There's going to be tons of crafters, vendors, small businesses, artisans set up. Our beer truck will be back for the second year in a row from Womble's Wolf Beverage, which is so exciting. People love it. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Raffles, all kinds of stuff. So if you had to leave us with one, you know, thought about the mission of Gray Muzzle Manor, what you want people to know about your organization, what would that be, Marcy? Um, the tagline is Gray Muzzle Manor, the place that love built. Um, and when people come or have any kind of interaction, I want them to feel like they belong. They have a place that they belong, whether that's coming to visit or therapy or whatever. Um, and the mission, so the mission of the organization is very similar um, in that, you know, providing rescue for senior and hospice animals, community outreach, and then, you know, the mental health services. But it all kind of stems on the foundation of acceptance, non judgment, and being present. And if we could just do half of that the way the animals do in all regards to rescue and mental health, then we would be a lot better off. So just a few, I guess, like follow-up questions we had here is just kind of what is a session with you like? Like what really goes on like in a session? What can someone expect? What, like what does it look like? Yeah. Um, so you come to the farm um, and also I'm also working with the farm through uh Blossom Counseling and Wellness in Collegeville. We've also just teamed up. So we're at Blossom offering um, equine therapy at Gray Muzzle Manor, in addition to me doing it on my own. But anyway, um, so, so you come out, and usually we've talked on the phone and just kind of got to know each other just a little bit to see if it's a good fit. We meet in my little office, little office, and we just kind of chat for a few minutes. Um, you're met by the horses are usually hanging outside. Um, there's dogs in the office with me. Um, I love inspirational quotes. So you're met by all that stuff. And really look at why do you want to come? Um, and sometimes kids have different answers than their parents, which is fine. Um, because it's, you know, the session belongs to you. So I'm just going to walk alongside while I help you discover the strength that I know that you already have inside you. Um, and with adding the animals and the art and this, you know, what are other entities we're creating in my head, it's like a triad almost. And we're just the catalyst to helping you navigate what's going on in your life through us and the animals and the art. Um, so 
talk a bit. And then first session, we might be in the office a little bit more. Um, but I like then everybody to be able to meet the, my coworkers, which is my chickens, my ducks, my dogs. There's eight of them. I don't know how that happened. Um, there's two horses, a mini horse, two goats, um, three potbelly pigs. I have one house cat, two barn cats, and two shed cats. <laughs> so we meet all of them as you're talking i'm like oh my gosh you're living my dream i'm like i want to buy my own farm by the time i'm 24 that would be the dream i keep hearing you say all the animals you have and i'm like all right i, I'll say, I can be. help you with how not to do it <laughs> <laughs> um you, you're, you should come out seriously um, come out anytime oh my gosh definitely and then um is there any way that people can like help foster the animals i know you said that some people you have people that do it if yeah someone wants to volunteer yeah so uh and also the sessions are i forgot to mention this part um an hour long we do have the option of doing 90 or 120 minute long sessions we do individual counseling and the model i use the equine model a gala is uh evidence-based and a lot of research showing how it does a lot for corporate environments and corporate team building, that kind of thing, big businesses. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, vol so volunteers, we, we do look for foster families often, but it, 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 I am so tiny, I don't always know when we're going to use them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those foster families, you know, I want for the SAFER program, and those are long-term commitments. Um, and but we pay for everything provide whatever they need mm -hmm. um but uh i never you know i tell people like you know it's okay to be fostered for other places too because i might not call you for six months like you know and if you can help then great mm -hmm. um and then so that's that's a way to to foster then I guess like my last question here is kind of I don't even know if you have an answer for this. I know they like there's like a some fact out there that like you know spending time petting your cat or dog for so many minutes makes you so much less stressed. Is that like true or is there any like advice you could give to like the people at home who you know might have a dog and be stressed or kind of thing like that? Um, it's amazing. I mean, I watch sessions and my jaw hits the ground because I have no explanation for what just happened mm -hmm. um, in an amazing ways with the animals. And I try to, like, if you think of the feeling you get when you come home and your dog or cat greets you, that, that feeling, we're using that. That's that unconditional acceptance, non-judgment. They don't care if you haven't showered in three days, you just lost your job, you failed a test. They don't care. They love you just the same. Um, that's what we're capturing. And then we're adding this element of mental health professional. Um, and it is important to recognize there is a difference between, like, spending time with the animals and then spending time with them as a therapeutic factor with a mental health pre professional present is very different. Um, and, you know, our jobs there are to keep people safe be as well, because things will come out, traumas, memories, things like that. And you really make want to make sure that whoever's doing the sessions is trained and knows what they're doing. Um, but even without scheduling a session or just things that if we watch our animals, what are they thinking about? Well, if they're laying in a bed, they're probably thinking about laying in a bed. <laughs> if the horses are eating grass, they're probably thinking about eating grass. Because they're prey animals in the wild. If they're standing there thinking about that they might have offended somebody three days ago, there's a cougar's going to jump on their bed. I mean, so if you watch your dog or cat or bird or whatever, and you notice those things, and trying to replicate that yourself will we'll do a lot. Well, thank you so much to both of you for coming on here this afternoon. You're welcome. It was wonderful to speak to both of you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You and too. we'll be back with more of Kutztown Live.